Cash Color Cannabis, a higher level of conversation on live hiphopdaily.tv, sponsored by the Georgia Hem Company. I got my guests in the building, man, Andrew Faria, Ethan Jackson with Greenbox. How y'all doing today? We're good, man. We appreciate you having us, bro. Appreciate the opportunity. No problem, no problem, man. So y'all have one of the more unique stories I've heard in cannabis. You know what I mean? I was reading about y'all in BET, and I actually got the... Um, Actually, I got a, a, a message about you from your publicist even before I saw the story. Right. But yeah, I got into it and I was like, yeah, I love to talk to these brothers, man, and speak about what they doing right now in the industry because it is cutting edge and we need to see more brothers like yourselves in here in positions like y'all are in. So um, first off, man, let us know who y'all are. Um, introduce yourselves individually. Uh, I'm Andrew. Uh, I'm 30 years old. I'm originally from, uh, from Anderson, Alabama. Yep. I've been all over the place, man. I uh, worked and lived in Atlanta for a while. I work for the management agency based uh, over off the four street execs, worked with them for a while. Work. Lived in New York, New Jersey, Harlem, Brooklyn. Uh, so I've been an entrepreneur for a while, man, probably the, the better part of 10 years. Mm. Um, just really trying to figure out a way for myself to put myself in a position where I can employ people like myself who have the same interests as me. Solid. What about you, Ethan? Um, Ethan Jackson. I'm originally from Detroit, um, but I've been in Anderson, Alabama. That's where I kind of grew up at. Um, used to do a lot of promotion and marketing for clubs and different venues in Alabama. Um, originally from the north, man, so you know, it's a different <laughs> it's a different style from being in the south, but you yeah. know, we've been adapting to it. Um, me and Drew have been working together for a while now. I've been knowing her for a while, so I think we we got something good we got going on, man. That's what's up. How did y'all two meet in the first place, being that, you know, you both from, was it in Alabama? Right. <laughs> yeah, we grew up in the same city, man. Word. So, you know, just knowing of each other, mutual friends, okay, uh, similar interests, you know how it is, man. Mm -hmm. And it's in a real small town, man. Everybody, you either know somebody or you know of them. Yeah. You know what? I got my family's from Alabama. My family's from Camden, and um, my okay. brother stay in Huntsville. And I always look at Alabama as one of the biggest states. It's also small ass cities. Right. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like it's a, it's exactly a big state right. full it's of exactly really, really right. small cities. Uh -huh. And it's always a concentration of people of color. So like yeah. anywhere where it's uh, 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 where it's gonna be black people, it's a lot of us, yeah. or you're not gonna see much of us at all. So all right. that's kind of how it is. It's still really. Um, I don't want to say the term segregated, but it's still like a high concentration of black people in certain parts of the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your overall story, though, is a cannabis story, you know right. what I'm saying? But before we get into Greenbox and everything that Greenbox does, speak to us about what made you want to dabble into cannabis in the first place. Have you, it, what it, did it come from you actually experiencing it or did it just come from you reading about the industry going on right now? Like, how did it happen? Uh, the original Greenbox idea, it honestly came from a trip, me being in Vegas. Okay. Um, and I was actually just shocked on the prices for everything. So when I went into the dispensary, I'm seeing eighty dollars, three five. Oh, you talking about for the bud? Yeah, yeah. So I was, I was shocked. I'm, you know, me being me, I'm like, these, they making a killing. Yeah. You know. So once I got back to Alabama, Atlanta, I started thinking like, damn, like, how can I get in, get in on this and cut out the middleman? Like, they charging this for this. What do we can do for this for this? So I just started doing a little bit of digging, a little bit of research, and that's kind of how I, you know, kind of put together the idea. And, you know, I threw it to Drew, and we was like, you know, it's all right, yeah. And it went up from there. That's what's up, man. So tell us about the concept of Greenbox, you know, saying the subscription service, and right. just what all, is, what, it all, what, what all entails with Green, when it comes to Greenbox. So Greenbox, it's like a multi-tiered um, platform, right? Okay. So. Uh, it's it's two que it's two answers to that question, right? So we have the cannabis part of it, and then we have the the non THC touching part, which is like CBD and hemp derived products, right? So the cannabis part of it is it's a it's a New York City based app. So basically, for a hundred dollars per month, we uh, deliver you uh, a curated box of cannabis uh, accessories ancillary products, stuff that we feel like you'll be interested in because we know that there's so many people rushing into the, the legalization space that it's really hard to discern what brands are worth your time and money and what brands aren't. Yeah. So we do that due diligence for you to try to give you a better experience. And then outside of that subscription box, we also offer just general delivery, right? So this is post-legalization. This is kind of the infrastructure we're building for that. Pre-legalization, we're branding ourselves as a CBD and hemp box in general, right? So we're rolling out our first box at the end of May in which we'll have uh, six or seven brands that we partner with. For the same $100 price point, you get $250 
of value. So we're, we're um, trying to do like minority and black owned, female owned brands, but we also just partner with any brand that we feel like is deserving of your time, right? Gotcha. So yeah. some of the first brands that we have in the box for the, our CBD portion is um, we have, we're talking to Al Harrington's uh, Replace Hemp um, line, the former NBA player, mm -hmm. um, Julian Marley, Juju's Ro Juju Royale brand. Um, they're gonna be in the box. He has like a virgin olive oil. Uh, and then we have a woman out of upstate New York who she has like a, t a, a team shirt that we're partnering with. So basically we're just gonna put a lot of cool stuff in the box at an extreme discount to you. Yeah. So you can kind of get an idea of what's emerging and what's worth your time. That's what's up. You know what, and um, it, it's, it's dope that you have that idea, you know, um, but as we know, whenever you're pitching an idea, it comes off as crazy to most people, right, you know what I'm saying, right. initially. What was the reaction of, of first when y'all was first pitching the idea to your friends and family and, and your, your colleagues and all of them just saying, look, I got this idea called Green Box. Like, what was the first reaction like? Most people, most people, when you present something that they haven't thought of, they're either dismissive or critical. Yeah. So, you know, I expect that. Like, anytime I present an idea to somebody, I expect them to preface it with some sort of negativity, which is fine because you have to be able to, to take some type of criticism from any type of endeavor that you enter into. But um, most people knowing that cannabis is such an exploding um, asset right now, yeah. uh, people were excited for us and they know we both have a history of entrepreneurship so they know that it, we just didn't wake up like, oh, we work at Lowe's. No offense to anybody who works at Lowe's and was like, now we're about to, you know, that's <laughs> now we about it to was try something it. that we, we pretty much combined all of our previous experience and, yeah. and resources to try to create this. So people were overall excited for us. Yeah. So what made you want to touch on New York as, as the, 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 the place to launch the brand? You know, like what, what made you pick NYC and pick New York State overall? Mm -hmm. um, personally, I think, you know, we looked at every other state, not just New York. Um, Ultimately, we looked at, you know, California is, is just too congested. You know, of course, yeah. it's been legal for years. It's completely ran through. Um, so we started thinking of untapped markets and states, of course, that had a big population. Um, so that's how we kind of came up with New York. We were looking at New York, New Jersey, and it, all, it just it made sense to start in New York. Right. Yeah. It, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, sorry about that. But um, New York is also congested. So for a delivery model to work, you know, it has to, to have, have a use case. So yeah. let's say in, in a more rural, rural or suburban area, the delivery model is not effective. So somewhere in New York where most people don't drive or most people just don't want to travel, we knew that it would be a little easier for us to gain traction. And then also we felt like, um, like to Ethan's point, when we explore like New York is really expensive to expensive to enter into that market and we also knew that um, there's an advantage to being a first mover so you know when you enter into a market and there's nobody else in that space doing what you're doing you be it's a lot easier for you to brand it's a lot cheaper for you to brand because it's just not crowded yet so yeah. that's why we chose New York and I lived there for about three years so I had a, a really good um, idea of the, the the consumer how people interacted how they went throughout their day and how we could kind of integrate into that yeah, right. and you, you touched on a good point being that um, it's, it's, it's an open market right now, so it would be wise for you to get in there initially. But like with every other, with every other little industry that's propping up around cannabis, eventually it's going to be bigger money coming in. Right. And even right now, we do have other subscription services. Like, what are your plans as far as combating the growth that we know is going to come as, and, and the, 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 the competition you have currently that's on the market right now? Right. Us being like people of color, us being young, us being millennials, um, by the time we create something, we expect other people to kind of come in and, yeah. and dilute it. Um, so that's something that we kind of welcome in a sense of where we just feel that we're going to be so progressive, so innovative with our idea, with our product model, that we're not worried about anybody else being able to feel that. Mm -hmm. So that's one. And two, New York State is really good about kind of bogarting the big guys. Like if you go to New York City, you're not gonna see a Walmart. Like they don't allow Walmart in there. You'll see not as many targets. You know, it's like they only have like two Chick-fil-A's. They don't really allow big chains, big franchises to come in because New York City is a merchant-based ecosystem. So they want the smaller companies to be able to thrive. So they're a little bit more um, mindful of that when, when big companies try to move into the market. Okay. And I know you said initially you're targeting um, um, brands of color, um, female owned brands, uh, fe female owned brands of color, things like that. Um, but again, reaching out to other brands, how hard has it been as far as you just reaching out to other brands and saying, look, we have this idea, we want to like, want to partner with you? Like, has it been easy, uh, easy sell? 
No, not at all. Okay. Um, it, it's been a it's been a ladder. You know, it didn't start off as easy as getting replies back to even getting the message looked at. Yeah. Um, but you know, we stayed at it. We built up the product literally from the ground up. So once it the box and the brand built some value behind it, that's where we got more replies. Right. Now it's to the point we have people writing us, setting up calls here, setting up calls here. So it it shows the growth that we have had from the beginning to now. And we expected it. Like anytime you start a new idea or a new company, there's gonna be like a trust barrier. Yeah, people kind of have to know that you are who you say you are, that you can facilitate your model and that you're not full of shit. Look, so basically doing 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 the podcast, let me tell you how many emails did not get responded right. to when we was first doing this because right. you know they didn't understand yeah, yeah, the concept know. of the show. And they're not going to it until right. they until see they the see product, until, yeah. until they like, see what you bring to the table. Any company that you build and you have to create value. Everything else follows value, whether that's money, whether that's attention, whether that's resources. So us we're just focused on building a value. The first couple of brands that we got in to be a little to be even more detailed we had to pay up front. You know, we may had maybe had to pay a premium, if, especially if they were established for us to partner with them. But now that we've gotten some positive press and people are kind of starting to look at us more so um, and, and see the potential in the label, um, it's, it's a lot easier for us today. But two months ago, we was getting sent straight to voicemail. Like, <laughs> so is there a criteria for a brand to be um, considered for the box? Like, like as far as like when I say criteria, do do you does it is it about packaging? Is it about um, how large the brand is or what the uh, what the their audience is capable? Me personally, I've never looked at how big the brand was or how small it was. It's really, is it worth it? Mm. You know, and it that goes back. I always go back to the cannabis side because you know you can shop with this person for years, yeah. but if the product isn't good, you are gonna stop. <laughs> so right. my thing is to have the best product. <clears throat> No matter, I don't care if it's you know the smallest company that's trying to get off the ground. Yeah. Uh -huh. To the biggest. Yeah. Who are some of y'all business models? Uh, originally, yeah. <laughs> it, originally our first idea for Greenbox, we wanted to do a cannabis vending yeah. machine, right? So we were kind of like, what? What's a good positive vending model? So. We looked at Redbox. That's actually kind of where we derived the name Greenbox from. We kind of wanted to adapt that model into cannabis because we felt like when you go into a dispensary, it's really primitive still the buying model. Like people are so excited that cannabis is legal. Nobody has like tried to bring in the process to 2019 on how we actually buy it or consume it, right? So you'll go to a dispensary, you may have to stand in line for an hour. You may only get you may not get any product information aside from like the really popular strains that are in that particular dispensary or that they have a um, benefit to sell. So we felt like we wanted to um, kind of transition that and offer like an automated uh, system, right? Or automated point of sale, which would have been a vending machine, but it was like a compliance nightmare. Like, it was like you talking about people shutting us down for the box. Like when we were trying to do put a, a vending machine full of weed in people's stores, Sorry, it, it, was, it was crazy. Like I always imagine, especially when they people give the idea of the vending machine thing, I just see somebody breaking in. Yeah, you know, every security. 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 I hate to be that guy, you know, what I'm saying? but but every it, time yeah. it's gonna people I mean, ask us that, like, what's what's gonna stop somebody from throwing this on the back of their truck and driving off? Like, and that's a <laughs> well, what stops Amazon right now? Like, people, you know, what I'm saying, right. like people people take a risk with Amazon right. every day. You right. don't know if that box actually got to your house. Right. Not exactly. at all. Yeah. I'm Not watching I'm watching Marley smile right now like, yeah, right, bro? <laughs> like, they don't know. But as far as the yeah. actual model for Greenbox, we actually kind of looked a lot towards streaming services, right? Okay. Because if you look at like Spotify and Apple Music, they're really effective at like filtering through what good songs and albums deserve your ear based off of your listening history, right? Yeah. So we kind of wanted to transition that into like the cannabis space, like okay, this is what you buy from us. This is what you're happy with. This is what you order from us frequently. So this is what we recommend. You know, and that was another question I was going to ask: Is it curated? You know, like we were talking about mm -hmm. with, with streaming services, like how we have a, a playlist that's curated to my mm -hmm. taste. If I listen right. to something similar over and over again, is that the same deal with Greenbox? Like, if I, you know, I'm not going to get a blanket product that you just mm -hmm. give out to everybody who's a subscriber. Like, is mine going to be right. curated to my taste? Right. Yes. Okay. It forces we kind of. The, the way the laws are right now, it kind of forces us to be curated just for the simple fact I that, feel you. that right. certain 
areas can't get certain products, right? Especially yeah. in the cannabis space, obviously. But even with like CBD, like New York is kind of going towards the direction where if, if a hemp derived product or a CBD product isn't grown and tested in New York State, you can't label it CBD. So right. even somebody in New York State who we may offer them something from Colorado, we can't say this is a CBD tincture. We have to say it's a hemp derived. Yeah. So even like the the compliance or like the 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 regulatory stuff that we have to be focused on, we have yeah. to make it curated. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I feel you. And you you were going to touch on another point about how the compliance is a nightmare. You know, uh -huh. you did briefly touch on that. Speak about the the hoops and ladders that you know we are kind of forced to go through because we have a federal side that's not mm -hmm. legal. You got mm -hmm. states that are perfectly cool with something, right. and in the middle, we still got laws that need to be worked mm -hmm. out. Like, speak about the the compliance issues that you go through just trying to curate the boxes. Um, really, with the you know with the laws and everything like that, we've gotten more actually turned down because of we are of color. So it's been a lot more of, you know, people we spoke to over the phone say, you know, we want you to look like this, do this, be this way. So it's been a it's been a nightmare and a, a hassle trying to get to exactly where we need to be with the brand. Yeah. Um, just because it this field is a white based field. Okay. So it, it's it's completely different, you know, us being of color coming in trying to in a sense, sell weed, right? Legally, and then you know what? Like, I don't know how y'all do. Like, like the way y'all came in, right? That too, because I come in like that too, and I be like, yo, they be looking at me like I am crazy. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? No matter, no matter what I'm doing, because this is just how I'm naturally in on a regular basis. Like I will dress a certain type of way. Like put that in consideration as well. Like, do you feel like when it comes to you getting more business and you expanding your business even in the future, how much your our appearance is gonna is gonna hinder that? I think it it definitely factors into it whether whether people like to admit it or not or whether we like to admit it ourselves or not. Even like based off of what type of meeting or what type of press that we may get, Ethan and I have to discuss how we're gonna present ourselves and whether Always. or not it That's may crazy. make somebody uncomfortable. Code right? changing becomes real in right. your life. Right. right. You know or what I'm saying? Even, <laughs> like, even like the inflection of our voice, how yeah. we talk how we talking to you. Yes. We may not be able to talk to somebody else, even though we may be trying to communicate the exact same thing. Yeah. So um, it's, I, but you know, we've been black our whole, whole life, you know, so it's so like, nothing, it's, it's, just, nothing new. it's nah. just something that you just deal with. You know, it's crazy because yeah, code switching is real when uh -huh. you, when you're dealing just in almost in any industry really, but when you're dealing with cannabis right now, you do have to kind of figure out how you're going to be approached. And I've actually felt that way even dealing with people of color, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Even dealing with black people. Like uh -huh. I know I, I've felt like I walked in a room and I've had the feeling like, these black people are trying to figure out what type of nigga I am. Right. Like yeah, whether definitely. you a hood nigga, uh -huh. whether you a dumb nigga. Uh -huh. Like they, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Just insert the, right. you know what I'm saying, prior uh -huh. to that. But they trying to figure out what type you are. Right. <laughs> Rather than yeah. ever try to actually get to know you. Like uh -huh. appearance plays so much of a role in, in, in a lot of this currently right. to me. Currently. And But yeah. honestly, I will say on a more positive note, mm -hmm. everything you said is right. But people do want to see people like us in this space right now. Oh, they, like, I believe it. I we believe are it. actively looking for a, a female, a, a black female or a minority female to be a part of our company. Cause right now we have an advisory board. So like anytime you're creating a startup that's in like the tech or cannabis space, um, investors like to see an advisory board. So it's gonna be a lot of different industries um, or, or segments of your company that you're gonna running the obstacles with, yeah. and they want to know that you have somebody who's of that segment who can guide you, right? Yeah. So all of our advisors, um, they're all men right now. I mean, we have black men, Asian, white, but they're all men. So we're at the point now where we're actively looking for a, a woman just because we know that that's a perspective that we need because yeah, you half of our customers that. will be women. Yeah, but I will gotta, all, also that. say that the smartest person that we've talked to in the cannabis space so far has been a black woman, Sarita Wright, out of Brooklyn. Shout out to sure. Sarita, man. man. She a living legend. Yeah. Shout out to Sarita. She a living legend. Like, man, like Help we got on the phone lot. with her. Yeah. We was on the phone with her and like, we was kind of on autopilot because we can explain the idea so well, the model so well, what we want to accomplish so well. But like when we told her, she was able to just tell us like item by item that what was wrong with our model, what problems we were going to run into. So she actually saved us a lot of money because she gave us foresight into a lot of issues yeah, we were going to run into. So she saved us thousands of dollars in one conversation. Word, I man. I want to say that. Word. This industry is moving, moving fast. Uh -huh. Yes, I know you. I know you have plans. Especially listen to your business plans now. You clearly have plans on growing with this industry. Right. Where do we see you growing? 
in over the next couple of years? Like, where do you see the brand growing out to be? Like, will we see a brick and mortar mm -hmm. green box or, you know, we, you know, like, almost like how we had the, what was it, how they used to do with the eBay right. stores? <laughs> like, right. we gonna yeah. see that? Right, so Ethan, he's more of like the developmental, so I'll let him answer that, but before that, it, I'll say that you have to kind of take what the market gives you in cannabis right now. And mm -hmm. the example for that is like, we want the Manhattan market. So the Manhattan market is, you know, Manhattan, Harlem, certain counties in New Jersey, like Essex County. Um, so, but the, the legalization roadmap in each state is different. So in New Jersey, three out of 10 licenses, retail licenses have to be given to a minority, right? So that'll give us a way to create a brick and mortar store much more easily in New Jersey versus if it legalizes in New York State, yeah. they're gonna have an auction. Well, that, that's what is being proposed. Like, so you basically have to bid on the license. You have to tell the state of New York how much you're willing to pay for a retail license. And the minimum is like five, <laughs> is like $5 million. Yeah, that's crazy. So that's, we, you talk about corruption and right, loading. So they price the smaller companies out from the beginning of in course. New York State. So yeah. we would have to pretty much just be a delivery model from there. Yeah. So it really just depends on, yeah. you know, what state legalizes now, but I'll let him answer the rest. And in result for Greenbox, honestly, um, we both came to this understanding that we wanted to be the Amazon of weed. Um, cannabis, CBD, hemp, everything. Um, and that's also, a, I mean, that's a good thing for everything, for every company that we run into or we, we position with, um, especially New York farms, companies. Um, the goal is basically to have us as the platform. Yeah. And to be you may have, content. this farmer may have five acres of marijuana but they don't have the marketing skills to sell to these five acres and you just sitting on bundles and bundles of bundles. Mm. And designated to us, we market mm. your brand, we help your product, we help mm. your company build as well as ours. Right. So in result, Amazon of cannabis. Right. We, we want to be effective in every, uh, every step of the process in cannabis. Like you said, like through marketing, through wholesale, at, we, we're looking at um, partnering for our own farm in Rochester, New York, so we can have our own product, our own private label cannabis. Um, we're, we're working with a few vendors to have our own private label of uh, CBD and hemp products. So we want to be able to, like he said, to really be able to allow brands to not have to focus so much on marketing and, and making good product and have a platform that's, that's going to get them some exposure, yeah. but also ourselves just to really be able to grow out and, and be more profitable overall from a revenue standpoint, but also we want to bring at least 100 people who look like us into the space because I feel like um, less than 4%, it, this is a fact, less than like 4% of cannabis companies are owned by minorities and women combined. That includes white women. So it's just not a, it's not a lot of representation. So for us to be fortunate to make it this far, I feel like we're responsible to bring more people through the door. So we're actually in the process of creating a, um, an accelerator program. So where when we find other black founders or minority founders, yeah. we just put them in contact with companies who can just uh, shorten some of the, 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 the developmental stuff that they're dealing with and then help them get funding, help them get in front of investors, help them with investor materials, stuff like that. And the second, I mean, with, with him saying, you know, help. And bravo them. to that, that's needed. Yeah. Be real, be real. I yeah. mean, because, uh, you know, being raised up in a black community, you're not told about credit. You're not told about how to handle your money, your finances properly, or even to open a business, mm -hmm. how to get a apply for LLC or C Corp or anything like that. So with us having this platform, like you said, I think that's gonna allow us more of the teaching skills to show people you can do it mm -hmm. versus you don't have to, you know, in a sense, not saying college is not the right way to go, but sometimes you don't have to go through this to get right. there. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Also, also, I know we being long winded, but no, you I got good, one last good. part to this answer. <laughs> so, we want to be very provocative in our marketing, right? So, I'm not sure how many of y'all have like a marketing or like a business background, like brand development background. But if you really look throughout the cannabis space, a lot of these companies marketing sucks. Like, so you if mean? you look on these companies' Instagrams, who've raised x amount of millions of dollars like they don't have any type of originality bro any type of brand concept like this they is a whole nother episode right yeah. like <laughs> they just post a picture of some weed episode. or like some memes no of sense. like homer simpson with red eyes or like, name your brand after right. something that's already established right. so, you know what i'm saying like nothing, right yeah mm -hmm. so with us like we want to try to bring our culture into how we sell cannabis because yeah. people don't really like to speak on how much black culture Influence, um, influence the public positive perception of cannabis, right? Oh, we could talk about so, it here. 
even like with our <laughs> first box that rolls out that. in six weeks for anybody who's interested, it does ship nationally, so it's available in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. Also, um, we're actually doing a collaborative pro uh, project with a New York-based company that benefits a New York-based charity, right? So um, a designer on the Lower East Side of Manhattan, his name is Brian Wood, he actually, he's famous for like vintage mashups in New York. So he'll take an old like Versace jacket or whatever jacket and he'll cut it up and repurpose it and make a whole new piece of clothing out of it, right? And then he'll auction it off or he'll sell it for like 500 bucks. He actually made six pieces for us um, and it's called Coming to New York. So basically it's um, a bunch of mashups of New York based teams like the Jets, the Giants, the Yankees. It's really dope, I'll show you after this. And we're actually gonna auction it off for charity and uh, a portion of the proceeds go to the, uh, Amer the Ascend Educational Fund, which is a Bronx-based scholarship program. So yeah. if you're, a, if you're a, a, a immigrant or a first-generation child of an immigrant in New York State, they help you uh, secure scholarships for college. So we're gonna donate the proceeds to the AEF Foundation. So just stuff like that, because we also know that people don't really give a shit about a box full of weed no. stuff, because <laughs> no. you can just find that anywhere. So yeah. you have to really integrate it in what people are interested you, you in. You gotta give people an experience. You know, right, like, exactly. like I, I toyed with the idea of doing a magazine, and we are, you know yeah. what I mean? But, but me and my partner who was talking about the magazine spoke about the, the like how you're doing, like a box, uh -huh. um, a, a subscription thing. And we spoke about how you actually got to give people an experience. Like, it's right. not the same as getting the source or nothing like that in your house anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, you got to give people a reason why they right. want this. And that's an experience. Like, you're yeah. making them part of the brand. Right, exactly. Yeah. Because our generation, man, one thing that people haven't realized is there's been a major transition on how we like to be sold to. We're not the pe we're not the kids who grew up in the 80s or 90s where we're very customer service oriented. The customer comes first. and. If we don't get the experience we like, we want to speak to a manager. Millennials and Generation Zers, we really want to make, we want to feel like the company we're supporting or the person that we're supporting is benefiting our community, right? Yeah. So with Greenbox, we feel like that's our responsibility to show that from all of this revenue and attention that we're garnering for ourselves, that we re redistribute it to people who could do the same thing that we're doing if they had our opportunity. Yeah. Right. Well, I applaud that, being especially especially from the perspective of. Um, more representation and what right. more representation does do when you, when when it comes to getting more people of color involved into something and I, to touch on what you were saying about the marketing not only does the marketing suck you clearly don't know how to sell to anybody uh, that's no. of color no. like seriously because because no. again when i joke about how i know when i walk in the room you're trying to decipher what type i am right. i also know this you'll quickly sell me this image on a wall but when this image walks in the room, you have a problem. Yeah. And I've been in them rooms. You know what I'm saying? Where, where you'll walk in there and see a, a, a fight for the, a war on drugs poster where there's a brother thrown all against mm -hmm. the wall, all mm -hmm. against the uh, po police car, mm -hmm. and they're preaching about how this is a wrong. Mm -hmm. Let that same brother walk in that room. Or you'll have a, <laughs> and, and or watch out everybody in that room. Or will. you'll see a diversity panel, Bro. and everybody up there is a white male. There's no diversity on the panel that no, we're discussing diversity. No, 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 and, and, like and, that. That, and that is an issue when it comes to cannabis, because it's like, it, I, I also credit that to how fast everything is moving. People aren't no, not only aren't getting adjusted to how to advertise to people, mm -hmm. but it's like, you're kind of just throwing everything against the wall and you're sticking to an old stereotype yeah. of what a stoner is. Like, like I say all the time, like I'm a, I'm a professional smoker. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I right. do this on a daily basis. Between everything else in my life, you'll never know that. You right. know what I mean? So in order for you to advertise to me, you literally have to know me. You right. really have to really do market yeah. research to know that I like music, mm -hmm. I like sports, I like all this other shit, mm -hmm. and we. And, right. yeah. and to go back to that, you know, a lot of people that, you know, are in this field right now, not to sound bad or anything like that, they really just have a lot of money. And of course, mm -hmm. cannabis is the hottest thing smoking right oh, now. Oh, you ain't so, lying. <laughs> of course, I mean, I might not have the marketing side, yeah. but if I got the badge to invest in it, Mm -hmm. Why not? Yeah, I feel like Now, it. that's where, you know, it, you do need the marketing. You need mm -hmm. a strong marketing with whatever you do. You can't just sell to a coach and you don't know what you're selling to. Bro, and you also, I feel like some of the marketing be so lazy because also you just can't throw a, a girl in a bikini and just exactly. be like, boom, this yeah. is my product. Sex right. just doesn't scale. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like it'd be so sad sometimes. I'll scroll through Instagram and be like, this really shouldn't be a brand. Like, yeah. nothing uh -huh. on this page says anything about what you want me to buy other than there's a couple right. of girls in this picture. Right. And I think they're still on the old platform of sex sales, but you Yeah, know, yeah, and they still yeah. they still think there's, there's a you shaggy know. out there yeah. that, right. that people are selling to. You know what I mean? Like, right. they they dead serious. Like, they, yeah. they don't even look at the fact that Snoop Dogg is now a grandfather. Right. You you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. like you're, you're still selling to Snoop in the 90s. Mm -hmm. All right. So. So at the end of the day, man, what do you, what do you, what, what's the, what's the end goal for the brand? I mean, you spoke heavily about being community um, oriented. You spoke uh -huh. heavily about supporting brands of color and, and being uh -huh. an incubator and just being a space to grow others, man. Right. 
just in a nutshell, what what we're gonna what is Green Box at the end of the day for everybody? Uh, Green Box, what we would like it to be, and what we're what we're building ourselves to earn is being your first point of contact for cannabis, right? So in New York City, that's through our delivery model, right? That's through us being the first brand that you look to for like reviews or insights into a new brand that you're interested in spending money with, yeah. right? And then also we want to be um, a model of how effective you can be with influence in the space, right? Because I just, I feel guilty being, like getting all of this credit and all of this um, um, attention surrounding me selling weed legally when it's a million people who look like me yeah. in prison who sold weed way better than I did five years ago, for real. right? Yeah. So I feel like we have, <laughs> yeah, for real. so we have a, a responsibility to um, extend our opportunity to other people. Solid, man. Well, I appreciate y'all brothers for coming through and speaking to us about the brand. I'm right. um, hopefully you could chop up with everybody in here and let right, them know course, about definitely. it after the show. And again, appreciate you coming through, nice Ethan. You appreciate too, you, Andrew, Thank man. You, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. No problem. And that's Cash Color Cannabis, a high level of conversation sponsored by Georgia Hemp Company. Thank you. We're out.